Good morning again. Good morning. Better get that one in <laughs> to wish you a Merry Christmas. And we live in that today is really the culmination of our celebration. The trees come down after today, all the Christmas decorations. Today is gift giving day, the feast of the Epiphany, the arrival of the Magi's or the wise men or the astrologers or the sorcerers. Whenever you choose to call them, uh, this is the day they showed up and gave their gift. But this morning, I just want to leave you with a thought. There are some visitors, and you're going to hear who these visitors are, are shortly. Uh, and uh, let me say to all of you, welcome to our service. Our communion really is open. I say to people, the communion can't kill you. It can help you. For us, the communion is not given to perfect people. It is given to people who are sick, who need medicine, who need God's spiritual medicine. And that's why we come and we take it all the time. Not because we're perfect, but because we realize it is one way of remaining in our spiritual health. So, this morning, <clears throat> I'm going to ask you to, all of you, just close your eyes for one minute. Just one minute. One minute. Close your eyes. And I'm going to ask you to look into your mind's eye and see the image of yourself. What do you see in that image of your own mind about you and who you are? Do you see beauty or ugliness? Do you see strength or weakness? Do you see peace or turmoil? What do you see? You may not open your eyes. <clears throat> My reason for doing that is this is the first Sunday in the year. And I'm hoping, as I said on Old Year's, New Year's Night, that we're not going to carry the baggage of 12 into the New Year of 13. If it is negative, if what you saw in your life was negative, Drop it. If you saw weakness and you didn't see strength in yourself, banish the weakness. Claim the strength. If you saw fear and not faith, get rid of your fear. Grab a hold of your faith. If you saw ugliness and you didn't see the beauty put aside the ugliness it doesn't belong not in your head not in your mind not in your world see the beauty why am I asking you to do this because I want you to begin to see yourself just not, not as some little person who lives in some little home in a little place called Bermuda with all this confusion. But beyond that, to see yourself as an important person created by God with your own mold. Nobody like you elsewhere cannot be matched. And that God's finger had something to do with your creation. You, designer, not duplicated, never ever will be duplicated. And God did that with his own hands. And God took his breath and breathed it into you, clay, and said, now live. That God made you a part of the earth. This dust that flies 
throughout the universe. So that while you may have been born here and you live here, you cannot be stationed here. That you are a child of the universe and you have a right to be here. You have a right. Because God called you and gave you the right to be here. Want to see yourself? I want to see yourself in, in a big way. And put aside the little tiny little complaints and, and frustrations and you know all that little crappy stuff. Get rid of it. It holds you back. It kills the people in you, the person in you. It hurts, it hurts your friends and your family. It sets down your nation and it inhibits the world. You want to see yourself as a part of a, a movement that started way back when and there's a continuing history of people who are struggling for freedom, for righteousness, for justice and for peace. I want to see yourself a part of that. I want you to be able to go back and say, long before all this talk about where we came from, long before all that, down through the annals of history, we as a people had our place, had our churches, had our universities, had our mathematics, had our philosophy, had our theology. We had it. And we were then ordained to carry through the world that anybody who would come into our presence would have to live with it and learn from us. I want to see yourself a part of that. I want to see yourself as understanding that what happened to Bermuda, that we now have our freedom, didn't just happen here. It had its annals long before the people left Egypt when they were crying. And God said, Moses, go down to Egypt and free those people. And I'm going to send them throughout the universe. Because only those who are free can help to free others. I want you to understand. I want you to understand that what happened to the little girl in the Middle East that was shot. And they said we thought they thought they killed her. And God's will was not for her to die, but for her to live. And even though she must take more construction of her face and her brain, that she could leave a hospital and wave and say, I'm not dead. You will hear from me yet. I'm just a child. I want you to understand that when the angels went to uh, Elizabeth and said to Elizabeth, God has chosen you to bear a messenger. Another messenger, like Moses. I want you to bear John. And went to Mary and said, and I want you to bear John's cousin, Jesus. And I have special things for them to do. That is a continuation of what happened way back when. Coming to fulfillment now. And you know what? The heralds of the world will never stop it. He was, he was fine. Our wise man, I heard you looking for this little boy um, down in his heart. He's a challenge to me. He's talking about justice and righteousness and fair play. I can't have that. So you find him for me. And when you do come back and tell me about him, I truly want to worship this little father. God would have nothing. You cannot mess with God's plan. They went, they found, they gave their gifts. They left. And the angel said, don't go that route. You now have to go another way. Back to your own country. Because justice and mercy and fair play and love must win. Hatred never will. They gave their gifts. Where were you? Where were you? They say your gifts are not your own. You have gifts. Everybody in this room under the summer world has a gift to give to our Lord today. Everybody. Young boy, young girl, seniors, 
in between, we have our gifts to give. What are, you, what are we going to give him? What are we going to give him? The three wise men went in and they gave three gifts. What were they? It began. That was their gift. Do you know how long it took them to get to him? To give their gift? Do you know how many times they were discouraged about going there? How many cold nights? How many hot days? How many, how many unpleasant rides across the desert? Do you know how long it took them? It didn't do it overnight. Years and years of following a star because they had this gift for the Christ child and would not be deterred and would not be deceived. What about you? What do you have to offer? They say your gifts are not your own. We're like apples. Apples were not created for apple's sake. Apples and fruits are created so that we may consume them, we may eat them, and in eating them we may live. Our gifts are not our own. How dare you take your special gift that God gives you and sort of lock it up and say, I'm going to share it with nobody. How dare you? You don't lose it, you don't use it, you lose it. And what has happened to many of us is those of us who have voices don't use them, so we lose them. And those of us who have the ability to speak and encourage people don't use it, so we, we become nags. And those of us who know how to cheer our people, and don't try to cheer people up, become sad and weak and heavy. What are your gifts, my friends? What do you bring? I close with this love story. I told you before, you may have not, you may have forgotten it. That is the little African boy. His teacher from England was going back. And he wanted to give her a very special gift. And so he presented her with a shell. Lovely, unique shell. She accepted it from him and thanked him for it. Then she realized that this shell didn't come from the bay nearby. This shell came from quite a distance, at least 50 miles away. So she said to him, I want to thank you for this gift, a lovely little gift. She said, but you didn't get this here, did you? He said, no. She said, you got this 50 miles away from here. He said, yes, I did. She said, such a long, long journey. Such a long, long journey. And the little African boy said to her, teacher, the long journey is a part of my gift to you. I'm not asking you to make a long journey, friends. I'm asking you to make a quick journey, a short journey. I'm asking you to give your gift to Christ. What, what is it you're going to give this year? I'm 19, I'm 20, 13. What are you going to give? We awfully we came to church every Sunday and try to sit through an Anglican hymn service and sing Anglican hymns and get bored. And then this year, and you're no better off than last year. It seems to me this year, because you're a child of the universe and you want to be connected with what's going on in the world, you would have your own gift to give and simply say, as of this moment, on this first Sunday of the year, this is what I'm going to do for my Lord. Do it for your church. Do it for your community. Do it for the children of our community. But I'm going to do it to make the world a little better place. And I know it's going to cost me something. It may be time, effort, some of myself, but if those men can travel that far to give their gift, I'm not asked to give that far. I can give my own gift. The gift that we give, long journey or short journey, is our gift to the Lord. They bought their gifts, my friends. What gift will you offer today, this day, to our Lord on the first Sunday in 2013? In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.